fascism coming to a community near you. And I encourage you to read it, print it out, keep track of this. But the bottom line, yeah, that's, that's the corporate power. I mean, everything we've discussed here tonight is all about corporate power. I'm so glad you brought that up because I was just thinking about this the other day. John Roberts was installed as, as the, uh, in the Supreme Court, the head of the Supreme Court, for the express purpose of, of protecting corporate interests in America. And the, the writing was on the wall. I think a lot of people understand that with the way the economy is going, healthcare, and a lot of other issues, that Americans are going to start turning and looking at the European model and seeing that socialism, that terrible word, socialism, actually works in a lot of respects. And they don't want you to, they don't want you to know that, but they, they figure you may find out eventually. And then you're going to turn to Congress, you're going to turn to the courts, you're going to start making changes in this country that we all want. Well, who's going to stand in your way? The Supreme Court. Yeah, but John Ron, Roberts led Supreme that's all Court. going to change now because that crazy Jewishful activist, Sonia Sotomayor, is going to yes, start playing the true. Macarena and doing lap dances for Clarence <laughs> Thomas, and everything's going to change. One can hope. But, but, but you're right, Todd. This is a hugely important thing, and it's a pivotal yeah. moment in, in, in American history here, and the battle is being fought, fought in part on the Supreme Court. And John Roberts and Samuel Alito and all those guys are there to protect corporate interests. Yeah. And they will do that fiercely. Will the, the new thing, justice? You know, you know that Roberts would not have ordered that argument unless he knew he had the votes. He knows what, he knows right. what Ted Olson's going to say, and he knows he has the votes to totally uh, undermine he knows what uh, Anthony any Kennedy's restrictions gonna say. on corporate And that's status. why I said we have to be ready when that happens to say, okay, we are now Mussolini's fascist, you know, Mussolini dissolved parliament and replaced it with the Cameo de Fascio Corporaciones. So every congressional... <laughs> the, wow. the, the, the Chamber of Fascist Corporations. So every oh. district, every congressional district, the largest corporation in that district selected who is going to represent that district in the, in the Italian parliament. The decision was no longer made by the voters. It was made by the largest corporations. And that's what John Roberts is setting up for us. And we have to be ready for that, and we need to be informing people about that. And, and, and unfortunately, it sounds so wonky, and it sounds so no, subtle, Tom, no. but we've got to figure out a way to make this hot and sexy. And only you, Stephanie, That's can do Stephanie that. That's Stephanie's job. Okay. It's true. Um, I speak for all of us when I say, do we have to know the part where you spoke Italian? What was that again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Italian, very it's, sexy language. That's how you make Indeed. it sexy. Right. You say it in Italian. Yeah. Do, do any of you think that the new justice is going to stand out from, from the, the court in any way. I mean, it went through confirmation hearings essentially following the Roberts model. No, because, because um, the, the man that she's replacing was also opposed to corporate power in these regards. He would have been one of the four negative votes. She will be one of the four negative votes. The, the, the balance of power in this court has not changed. Do you, do you have, I just in sense what... At least with regard to corporate issues. Right. I, in, a, in a broader sense, what, what is she going to bring to the court? Do you, is, there, is there hope to be had by, by Obama's first appointment to the court. I'm hopeful that she's going to be a really strong voice. I mean, there's a lot of people who complain about what a strong voice she is on three judge panels, and she can convince the yeah. other judges and get the Republicans to go with her. And right now, John Roberts seems to be the guy who's leading the thing. And he's got, he's got at least four and maybe five of the right-wingers all even going to his same little Catholic church where, they've got, you know, where they're doing the, 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 the Latin masses and and they're all members of Opus Dei. I mean, it's, it's, it's gotten very, very strange. Watching Mel Gibson movies and yes, stuff exactly, like that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and I don't mean that in any kind of anti-Catholic way. The Catholics have their right-wingers just like the Protestants do. You know, it's, it's, um, but, but my point is that John Roberts has done apparently a brilliant job from everything I'm hearing from people who work with the court in forging consensus and bringing people together, at least among his five. And she is... Uh, and and, and um, the guy that she's replacing, and oh my God, I'm Souter. Happy. Souter, thank David you, David Souter. Souter. David Souter is absolutely incompetent at that. David Souter is a classic New Hampshire, quiet, mild mannered, you know, guy. And so if she actually turns out to be the woman that we were told to be afraid that she is, or at least the right wingers right. were told to be afraid that she is. Balls than David Souter. That's right. Yeah. She might actually be able to create some change <laughs> among, particularly Kennedy, who's the swing vote. I have to tell you, David, I was in the, uh, uh, just as part of the White House press corps in the East Room when Barack Obama nominated her, 
Man, I have to tell you, that was a very, very moving moment. There was not a, even among the press court, there was not a dry eye in the house when she was talking about her family, her mom was there, you know, her brother was there, the whole thing. And I, 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 I think we should not lose significance of the fact that the first African-American president nominated the first Latina to the United States yeah. Supreme Court. Yeah. I mean, that is, that's a moment to celebrate. And I also want to say, I have high hopes for her because I may be the only one. I think she was absolutely right when she said a wise Latina can make a better decision than I can on certain cases. Absolutely right. Yeah. She sure is helping to do a better job than Clarence Thomas. <laughs> Remember, Bush said he was the smartest man in America, the most qualified man in America. I want to read uh, this question in full, and then we're going to take a, a break. This is uh, uh, from Esther in Auburn, who, who I think is here somewhere. Esther. Wave. Where are you? Oh. oh. Okay, here's what she says. We love AM 10, 1090 and this forum so much. We're spending our first wedding anniversary with our AM 1090 family. Oh, Thank right. you, Auburn. Although, really, it's a little sad, I have to I say. It's, but still. The, the I, first... I was going to say, I did not think that there was a woman here a bigger loser than me. And oh, God. <laughs> God. Oh, no, no. This was a lot cheaper than taking her out to dinner, right? Yeah. <laughs> the first anniversary is the talk radio anniversary, so it's appropriate. We're going to take a 20 minute intermission, and then we'll get back to whatever we want to call this here. Um, but I want to quickly. Uh, uh, Thank the sponsors who you're going to find outside the door, and you should uh, stop in and visit them. They all helped make this happen. The Washington Education Association, Labor Neighbor Radio, the Washington State Labor Council, the U.S. Census 2010, ADD Resources, the Sierra Club, Pyrex Precision Home Inspection, Iron Weeds, Goods for the Planet, Not a Number, Theo Palinism, and 33rd District Democrats, and... HY Furniture. We'll be back. Thanks. All right. Esther, seriously, this is the foreplay? 